A 31-year-old female presents with a one-year history of headaches. She describes it as a band-like pain that is associated with nausea and vomiting. What is the best treatment option? This is one way a headache can present, and there are over 150 different types of headaches. So let's focus on how headaches present, what can cause them, and how to treat them. Headaches are one of the top 10 causes of a functional disability in the world. So knowing and understanding this will be very helpful for your patients and on your exam. There are two main types of headaches, primary headaches, and secondary headaches. A primary headache is one that is not caused by another underlying condition. However, a secondary headache is caused by another underlying condition such as trauma or a space occupying lesion. There are so many different types of secondary headaches. People can develop headaches due to dehydration. They can also develop sinus or allergy headaches. And due to infectious causes such as meningitis. It's very important to know the red flag findings of headaches. These red flag findings may be vital clues to sinister or even life-threatening causes of headaches. So we should always inquire about them and follow up with them appropriately with imaging or treatment. A majority of these red flag findings can be remembered with the mnemonic SNOO. So let's take a closer look at what this mnemonic means. So the two S's, the first one stands for systemic symptoms. So this can relate to symptoms such as fever or weight loss. And secondary risk factors relates to underlying conditions or the patient's past medical history, such as HIV infection. Neurological signs. This can relate to sensory or motor deficits as well as signs of meningeal irritation like a positive Koenig sign. Now let's move on to the O's, older age of onset. So if a patient developed a headache for the first time at the age of 50 or older, then this would be a red flag sign. Onset sudden, or better yet, sudden onset. This can relate to something like the thunderclap headache that is classically seen in subarachnoid hemorrhage. And now for the two P's. P for papilledema, so you can remember that signs of elevated intracranial pressure is a red flag sign. And the last P, postural aggravation. And this relates to headaches that are precipitated or worsened by the position of the patient. We could even add a third P for pregnancy. If a pregnant woman has new onset headache, then we should promptly check her blood pressure because this could be a sign of preeclampsia. And this is a red flag sign not only for women who are pregnant, but for women who are in the postpartum period as well. So remember, a fever is a systemic symptom and is a red flag sign for headaches. Seizures may also be considered a neurological sign and a red flag finding for headaches. If you are liking this content, power up the like button and leave a purple heart below in solidarity to bring in awareness to headaches and migraines and the people who suffer from them. Now we will focus on primary headaches. 
These include migraines, tension headache, and a cluster headache. Now let's take a closer look at tension headaches. This is the most common type of headache and it predominantly affects women. We'll divide the discussion of tension headaches into three main categories, triggers, characteristics, and treatment. Some triggers include fatigue, anxiety, stress, high caffeine consumption, smoking, insomnia, or depression. There are many other triggers for tension headaches, but those are the most common ones. These patients describe their headache as being dull, non-pulsating, holocephalic, or bifrontal. You may even hear the classic buzzwords of a band-like pain. Patients with tension headaches may also experience autonomic symptoms such as nausea, phonophobia, or photophobia. They also may last anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple of days. Let's take a closer look at a non-pharmacological therapy. This includes psychobehavioral treatment like relaxation techniques and cognitive behavioral therapy. Another option is lifestyle modification such as exercise and weight loss. Other treatment options include reduction of caffeine intake, smoking cessation, and good sleep hygiene. Now, before we discuss the pharmacological treatment, let's take a look back at this patient. She was prescribed ibuprofen and advised to take it as needed. However, she says she takes it every day for the past month because she is afraid of the pain. What complication may most likely develop? So medication overuse headache may occur if NSAIDs are taken for more than 15 days in a month. So it's very, very important to advise patients about this. So like previously mentioned, NSAIDs such as ibuprofen are one treatment option. And of course, patients should be advised to avoid taking these pills for more than 15 days per month because if you overtreat your headache with these medications, it can actually cause another headache, the overuse headache. So NSAIDs can be used to stop the headache. However, you also have options to prevent the headache from occurring. So this is our prophylactic therapy. And patients can be tried on medications such as amitriptyline. It's also very important to note that opioids are generally avoided in the management of headaches. And that brings us to the end of our discussion about tension headaches. If you would like to see a video about migraines, comment below. You can also click subscribe and that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos like this. And to continue learning, click this video right here.